Mom and Pop still live somewhere around you They've been shoved underground But they're bound to push back through When the people say CSA They're talking about making culture Community supported agriculture Kind of like this We support a farmer with a couple few hundred dollars At the beginning of the summer And they bring us fresh fruits and vegetables All season long Greens and reds and yellows and blues, or you can even go in the garden and choose yourself. You see, a farmer takes on as many shareholders as their garden can sustain and maintain. Sustain and maintain we must, and by supporting a local farmer, we help take back the future. Cause mom and pop still live somewhere around you. They've been shoved underground, but they're bound to push back through. When the people say CSA, they're talking about making culture, community supported agriculture. Uh, so that, that sort of sums up what community supported agriculture is it's a group of people supporting a farmer. Community supported agriculture to me means people being connected with what it takes for them to eat. It seems that so much in today's world we just don't know where our food comes from and so um, part of the reason for doing a CSA is so that you have that relationship between the farmer and the person who's eating the food and people know where food comes from. Well, it's really difficult to get the critical mass of farmers to a farmer's market. You may have the customers, but you, you, it would be very difficult to get several farmers all at one place, especially at a, a new and small farmer's market. So why not sort of reverse that? You've got all the customers. Why don't the customers find one farmer and start a community-supported agriculture project? Um, the whole history of community-supported agriculture was, it was consumer eater motivated. You know, you could easily find a group of people who want to eat uh, good food, uh, and they probably could find one farmer, one gardener, that'd be willing to sell all their stuff to them. question in my mind that that's the future of agriculture. Um, I think uh, to have a community involved and people directly involved with your farm operation, to know the farmer, to know how they grow the food. Um, you know, if I was on the receiving end of the food, you know, how ideal is that to know that um, you're getting the freshest food available. Har you know, for us it's harvested the day of you get your food, so the nutritional value of that alone is is incredible. For the consumer, it's just a chance to know where their food's coming from, know that it's grown locally, know who their farmer is and how they do things, and a chance to get stuff that's truly nutritious and fresh, and to, you know, to, to interact with the farm. And, and, you know, a farm is really a little ecosystem in itself, and to get out and see what the natural world is, which includes farms. CSA is, for this farm, it's the best way for us to market what we grow. It gives me a little more leniency on when a crop would come in, or if it's a complete failure, it's not the end of the world, because we'll have something else that turns out good. I like it for what it stands for, and, you know, getting good, local, fresh harvested food into the hands of people that want to support a local farmer and keep people like me and my family on the on the land. I mean, it's a huge lift to have money coming in Financially. in the spring. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge lift to, to get all that stuff going. It's it's a it's huge and that's that's a yeah. that's a great part of our of it. And and it, another one is just got to be the 
the way you know just the, the word community supported agri it really is i mean you know there's people in the community that want your produce it, it's just it's just a matter of putting it in a box and bringing it to them it sounds really simple but but um it's you know there's a lot of places that don't do it a lot of people that aren't doing it you know they are getting involved it takes a while for to get used to this new idea but you know three years is pretty fast People are hearing about this thing, and they'll come and ask me, even though they're not involved in a CSA yet, but they want to learn more, and they like the idea, and we try to connect people to the farm that's closest to them. We could afford to put a farmer in the middle of every 40 families, and I believe that the, the community would be richer for it. Um, I believe the, the, the farm is the healer and food is medicine. And that's what Steiner said too. The change has to happen, or can only happen, if people are eating healthy produce. Because the healthy produce will make that healthy body and healthy decision making. But if you don't start eating it and keep eating it, then you can lose track of that so easily mm -hmm. yeah that's a tricky thing I, I really admire every single member that participates in a CSA because they are working against all that social pressure to, to not do that kind of thing food in our country is subsidized by the federal government Nobody pays what it really takes to grow good food for people. I don't know how we get past that either. How, how do we make people realize that they're not only buying what's going on their table, they're buying what's going into their bodies and is going to be life supportive forever. <laughs> um, health, they're buying their health. No, it's the mo one of the most heartfelt things in the world to do, to feed people and nourish them and then have them say, I feel really good. My son never likes spinach. And I cooked the spinach from the farm and they, he said he loves spinach now. She said that last night to mm -hmm. us. It happens every week we hear that. <laughs> That's what we found out by doing the CSA. People come here and they find out for the first time in their life what a real fresh anything tastes like, a real fresh cucumber for even. People have said, that's the best cucumber I've ever eaten in my life. And I said, it's just a cucumber. Like you'd grow if it's fresh because it's in organic soil with compost and, and all that stuff and good minerals and, and that's what they taste like. But you've been eating store-bought cucumbers from you know, whatever the name is for the other kind of farming, <laughs> that kind of farming that shoots chemicals in the soil. They don't taste good. <laughs> and they're shipped for a week or two, you know, whatever, and they get old and uh, they're not good. I think too, it's um, the love that goes into the food that um, the farmer who grows um, enjoys being a farmer and that food as it's produced has, I think, um, better energy in it uh, for um, well-being. You know, I think about that when I'm harvesting, you know, that that energy in my food goes to, to make people healthy and happy and have lives that they hopefully share with other people. And, you know, that's, that's part of it. It all goes together. It's not just growing a product. It's, you know, growing your community or growing the stuff that that makes people people. Yeah. Every family with children comes out here and they love to go get the eggs or feed the chickens or pull a carrot. And I think that connection matters. A lot of people come and go through here and there's really uh, great experiences to be had just from, you know, having that connection. Like there's no better connection, you know, that old adage, breaking bread. And there's this great funk song 
um, called Breaking Bread with My Mama. And it's like, breaking bread with my mama, breaking bread with my papa, breaking bread. And uh, it's so good because, you know, we all need to eat. You know, the act of eating is so sacred. And so when the people, you know, so it's like, you know, you could just meet somebody, you know, and on the street and be like, hey, how's it going? But then when you get to just say hi, you know, and you're like growing the food and they're eating it and, you know, there's this connection and, you know, that's pretty special, you know, and that's, that's been lost in our culture. And, you know, and so it's really nice to see that being uh, regained. Our family, we firmly believe when you break bread together, you, you, you uh, take down uh, barriers, you know, I mean, that's one thing with human beings that we all we all have a connection with, no matter what religion or what your ideals are, or, you know, wants wants and desires, dislikes, whatever. We all we all eat food every day. I think it's important for people to realize how important communities are in their lives and a sense of community and belonging in a community. We've lost that with our land use patterns and we're finding that people want to recover that sense that they belong somewhere. And I hope that movement continues because it's so important to our sense of security and our sense of security for our kids. And, and that's, that's really kind of what we're about is community. And I think there are lots of different communities that we each belong to, whether it's geographical or your church community or your school community or whatever that community is. But you still need to belong somewhere. And, so and, we can belong to a CSA community. Uh, we, we work farm markets and we have our own on-farm market and we tire of the uh, competition between growers and uh, uh, CSA is, is a way to work around that and, and build relationships and build community. With a working share CSA, 10 person share at Blackbird Gardens here, it really does feel like this little group and also because this little group are into all other aspects of the outlying community, I feel so much more connected with my own community. With the CSA you're you're really, you're gaining, uh, not only are you gaining the money and the customers, but you're gaining support, you know. Um, that's, I think that's the biggest difference. What's well, the biggest difference between, between selling to a store or restaurant or, or market and selling through your CSA? You're actually gaining a lot of emotional and um, other s various uh, tools and job support. It's a lot about community support and that people give us money and then, you know, start us out that way but um, more like community support like old farming communities used to be, you know, where people went from farm to farm, each neighbors to help them harvest that crop, put up that barn. You don't see that much anymore, you know. So a lot of what we're doing is community building. You know, it's like community building agriculture as much as it's community supported agriculture. But to see the farm as one of those communities of need, as it were, you know, not just a community of convenience. So, which is what makes communities work. You know, it's not like everybody around here loves everybody so much they do, but they realize that that interconnectedness is, the old folks recognize that's what got them this far. You know, as, as, I, as I get older, I, I, I put more priority on the, the, uh, the relationship aspect because I think that's what we're here for. Food, community, friendship. That's more than I've ever gotten in any other job. The other jobs mostly were just about getting through the day and getting a paycheck. And here's a, well, there isn't much of a paycheck doing this. So <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that and discourage young farmers, but there is a lot of rewards. They're not necessarily all monetary. <laughs> There's a lot of other rewards. And then every once in a while, I get a letter from a family, a CSA member. Uh, thanking me for Christmas every Monday when they get to open their basket and find all the different things. So um, that's very rewarding when someone before the season ends are thanking you for what's happening and already asking if they can be a part of the garden next year. And so it's like, wow, that's um, powerful.
lot of people give money to things like the Nature Conservancy and Sierra Club, which are unbelievable organizations, of course. But if you think about putting your money where your mouth is in a really local mm -hmm. way, like, I want to preserve this land. I want to have my farm, my food grown by people who care about it. Think about taking some of the money that you might give to that organization. And do you know what I mean? That that's another way to think about mm -hmm. that you're doing two things at once. Mm -hmm. You're getting this food, but you're also preserving this land and this way of living. Yeah. But when it comes to my farming and and the, and the uh, taking care of the soil and stuff, I I really that's to me that's important. This is it's not only the plants that are growing; the soil lives and breathes and and produces. And it's just it's just a marvelous system. And and we we're screwing it up with chemicals and stuff. It's the home of the beautiful wild. As long as we keep exploiting the earth and moving Colorado River into California and bringing up California grown produce all over this country and produce from across the world and make it cheaper people, who's going to want to buy expensive, to them, expensive food? The other thing is in this country we spend a very small amount of our income on food. Um, so not only do we have to change the, the cost of food, but change people's consciousness into food and then change their commitment to not having what they want and then going and getting it, but getting something that's good and then making that the form of their meals. And like I have two or three CSA generated cookbooks and I don't think any of them are in house right now because they just were sort of traveling all summer. And even though I have my number in them, please return, I, I know they're they're out in the kitchens of the CSA people learning how to cook with all those green things. Because cooking with vibrant fresh food is not mainstream. It's, you know, it's a big learning process for most people. We found that there are young families who are using it as part of their homeschooling program teaching their kids about different products, where they're grown, how they're grown, how to prepare them. All valuable lessons when it comes to helping families understand agriculture in general. We moved from the big city and when I moved out this way that was one of the first things I looked for was to see if there were CSAs here that I could participate in. I wanted my son Jasper to know what a uh, what it was, where the food came from. You know, just go to the grocery store and pick, up, pick it out of the counter. And so here you can see that, oh, the vegetables come from here and come to our house. Even if he doesn't eat it all, uh, he really, I think, enjoys being here. So playing with the kids. <laughs> and I met my neighbor. Yeah. He's like kitty corner from me and I had never met him before. So that was cool. It's a great experience, I love it. It's exciting. I mean, it gives me a kick in the butt to get myself out there and get the stuff done because I know I have some help, you know? Because a lot of times I might be here alone on Friday morning or something looking at a huge harvest for Saturday's market and there's a CSA person and it just really is supportive. So I think the CSA movement can only get stronger as our society changes. And boy, that's a slow project. And it takes people not only committed to agriculture and the CSA movement, but people out there making social change happen and working together. Then the CSA movement will be stronger. You know, it's like you're working together. We're on a ship sailing together. You know, ahoy, the Archie blows, you know? I mean, we're on this, this sea, we're in the sea of vegetables, and sometimes the, the wave crests and, you know, these peas, like, you know, you don't know if it's going to swamp you, but then you look over and you've got, like, your, sh your shipmates or, you know, your farm mates over there, and, you, and they say, ahoy, avast, raise the mizzen mast, and then you just work through it and you harvest the peas, and you're not going to be swamped. So it's like we're on this, this ship and we're sailing together. It's, it's a really beautiful thing. revolution in agriculture which 
has to happen. I mean, we can't continue to to deplete our topsoil at the rate that we have been, and we can't continue to let these huge agribusinesses just rule the world's food supply. We've got to take the reins back and, and get together, grow our own food again. <laughs> I really believe that local food will um, become a community um, badge of courage. I think that folks will want um, to support that movement. And I believe that there will be people who will seek out the farm nearest them. And I hope that that's a trend, that all uh, as many local farms as we can support will um, thrive in this community. Beatrice, what's your favorite thing about the farm? Butterflies. Till I, the prince of love, beheld who in the sunny beams did glide. He showed me lilies for my hair and blushing roses for my brow and led me through his gardens fair where all his golden pleasures grow with sweet May do's my wings were wet, and Phoebus fired my vocal rage. He caught me in his silken net and shut me in his golden cage. He loves to sit and hear me sing and laughing. Sports and plays with me, then stretches out my golden wing and mocks my loss of liberty. Then stretches out my golden wing and mocks my loss. Of liberty. We, we are, are CSA, CSA farmers. farmers. We are CSA farmers. We are CSA farmers. I am a CSA farmer. I am a CSA farmer. I am proud of it. I am a CSA farmer. I am a CSA farmer. I'm 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 a CSA farmer. We're both CSA farmers. We are CSA farmers. We're CSA farmers. We're CSA farmers. We're CSA farmers. Right, could I talk about some more things now? Okay. Okay, so um, these shares that CSA members get, they bring their kids, some of them have kids and some of them don't. But some adults that I, I like and some kids that I like. And this cooler has shares, so the adults get their shares, and some kids can only stay for a little while, like two minutes or one minute. But Dingo woke up already, so. Oh, whatever. Uh, you need to watch out for cars. You need to look both ways when you're crossing the road. So, look at the map if you're gonna you don't know where to go. Or ask a person that knows where you need to go. So, bye, let's like play next time or talk about things next time, so.